Mr Chairman, I was <coughs> very disappointed that on this most auspicious day when Jacinta Ardern was appointed the art spokesperson for the Labour Party, she did not take the first call. And I can, un I can understand why Mr Robertson's bitter and upset about the fact that having been rolled for deputy leader and leader, he's now been rolled as art spokesperson. But I was, I was hoping that Ms Ardern would make a contribution on this most important of bills, because the Arts Council makes a tremendous contribution uh, to the arts in New Zealand and indeed has done so since it was uh, created by a national government because the golden years of the arts always occur under a national government and, and it has made a significant contribution across a wide range of art forms, for example fiction and I'm sure that if David Cunliffe uh, was, was minded to, he could submit his CV for the Prime Minister's award on fiction because uh, it, uh, uh, there, there is a lot more to be said on that front in due course. But let me just say something because the heart of the debate, and I'm, I'm sure Mr Robertson would eventually have got onto it had he had a third call, uh, the heart of the debate really focuses on clauses 10 and 11 uh, because Mr Robertson seems to have a concern about the fact that the Arts Board and Te Waka Toy are to be replaced by this new, more streamlined structure. And uh, I, unlike Mr Robertson, uh, I can uh, advise the committee that I have direct experience uh, of this body, having served on the Arts Board of Creative New Zealand from uh, 1995 until 2001. And what, in what was truly a, a golden period, I was chair of the Arts Board from 1998 to 2001. And the Arts Council, the Arts Council, the Arts Council was responsible for determining strategy and policy, whereas the Arts Board would deliver on that strategy. There was only one problem with this beautiful structure, and, and that is that it was bonkers, because the Arts Board itself was having to do a lot of the policy work, uh, and this funder-provider split may work well with widgets or in the health industry, but it doesn't work particularly well with the arts. And so what we're doing is streamlining the functions so that there will be one body comprising 13 members, not 27 governors, as currently exists under the existing legislation, with all the administrative burdens that that imposes. There'll be one body, uh, and that will be created under what is now Clause 10. But it's very important because there have been some very legitimate concerns raised about the future of Te Waka Toy that one focus, uh, and I suggest Mr Robinson pick up his bill and look very closely as I go through it, look at Clause 10.4, because what that provides is that for the first time at least four members of the Council are indeed to be persons who in the opinion of the Minister, after consultation with the Minister of Māori Affairs, are qualified for appointment, having regard to their knowledge of matters like tikanga Māori. So that's the first point. For the first time, there will be four designated members to sit at the council table, and they must have those qualifications. But it doesn't necessarily follow from that that Te Waka Toy will vanish, because I invite Mr Robertson to focus on Clause 11 because that provides that the four members of the Arts Council who fulfil the uh, qualifications that I've just spoken of are to form a committee of the Arts Council and subclause, sub, well, go to subclause two, Mr Robertson. It's important when in the committee stages not to have some lightweight rant, but to focus on the work wrong. Look at subclause two. The functions of the committee are to give advice and any other functions that the Arts Council delegates to the committee. Why doesn't he read the bill? Because he'd see that Te Waka Toy or the successor body could be given a great deal of things to do, and not a question of being subserving it, but a question of making sure there are much more direct linkages between the committee established under Clause 11 and the committee established under Clause 10. And I say this to Mr Robertson for two reasons. One, 
a simple reading of the statute, which I'm disappointed he hasn't undertaken, and two, from the experience that I've had, Mr Chair, Honourable Christopher Vinson. the experience that I've had uh, as Chair of the Arts Board of Creative New Zealand. And then I come to Clause 10.5, which provides that for the first time, two persons by reason of their knowledge uh, of uh, the arts and of the traditions and cultures of Pacific Island peoples are to serve on the Arts Council. The Pacific Committee, in my time as Chair of the Arts Board, was a subcommittee of the Arts Board. It had very little funding. It was disconnected from the Arts Council. Uh, and, and so now what we have is a much more streamlined body but one where there is an ability uh, of those who have a particular knowledge of tikanga Māori or of the Pacific cultures to make a contribution at that important strategic body, uh, which is the Arts Council. So the heart of the debate on part one is not all the nonsense that Mr Robertson was talking about, but it really is focusing laser-like on clauses 10 and 11, and that's what I invite members to do because uh, it's all very well to stand up and give a sort of one of those raves that he's accustomed to giving as the, asso as the now associate spokesperson on the arts. As I say, I was very disappointed that he didn't yield to uh, the, uh, the new spokesperson, but he, that, that's a, a part of the ongoing uh, divisions of the Labour Party, I guess. But he doesn't... He's not a... He, for all... He's not a sharing, caring person, and, and, and that's what distinguishes uh, uh, Mr Robertson from me. But you see, it's clauses 10 and 11. That's what one has to focus on, so I'll sit down now so that the newly minted rising star of the Labour Party, the person who has gone from rising star to elder stateswoman with no intervening period, Jacinda Ardern can stand up and tell us her views on clauses 10 and 11. Yeah. Uh, following, uh, Tracy Martin. But, uh, Mr. Chair, I hope. Uh